Okay, y'all, so what is the big deal about these Beyonce tickets? Prophet Tiffany Montgomery spoke out about Christians who go to Beyonce concerts. It got picked up by secular media and has stirred up such a aggressive conversation, especially in black Christian, in the black Christian community. Let's have a quick conversation about this. I hope it's quick. Let's go. If you are a black female, you want to know why? Black female who's in their 30s, 40s, or was raised by that age group of women. And I have to figure out if I'm going to hang that. I don't, I haven't decided. But the reason why is because she was one of the first beacons of our own generation of excellence. Okay, she was thriving, doing all the things, walking in the denim shorts, hitting down low, going left to right. We love Beyonce. <sighs> but then a transition happened in her artistry. It became very clear that the girl who had the Lord's Prayer at the end of the Destiny's Child album then is not the same girl now with Black is King with horse antlers on her head moving, okay? This girl has changed. When Prophet Tiffany Montgomery challenged Christians that she was talking to, in this congregation church room space. And she said, if you are a Christian and you are going to these um, concert, Beyonce concerts, you should be ashamed of yourself. She then went on to talk about the fact that she felt like Beyonce was in witchcraft. She also gave examples. She talked about her husband putting himself in the place of a deity with the different names he's chosen over his rap career. And there is a case to be made for what she said. But here's what stood out to me, and I'm gonna be just real with y'all, and some of y'all may not like this. I don't know Tiffany Montgomery, but when I even saw the clip and then later more of what she was saying, I completely felt like God was backing her up. I can, no, she doesn't have to say everything right. Her delivery was strong and aggressive. I also am a speaker and pastor. I'd be aggressive too sometimes, but let me tell you something. God was on the words of what she said. And you, you want to know one of the ways that I feel like she really was on to something? How upset it made people. It pulled something up in the church. An idol got hit, which I feel like in this case is Beyonce, who's still, I'm sure, an amazing person, right? It's bigger than her. This whole conversation truly is. And then in the church, people started taking sides. The secular media had a side, so everyone's in the secular space is like, what you mean? What you mean? That's why I don't go to church. Y'all always got something to say. Da -da 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 -da. Then you had other celebrity Christians speak up and say, I wish y'all would pray for her more, which I love this individual who says this, love her dearly. But she did say, hey, I wish y'all would pray for them more publicly than you talk bad about them. They are people too. I get that. And from where she sits, I completely understand. And then you had people commenting under that celebrity female's post. I agree, yes, hand claps. Then you had, in my opinion, the GOAT. Jackie Hill Perry, true Bible teacher, who doesn't ever speak on cultural things like this. Like she really tries to stay away. And she went live on Instagram, as you guys have seen. And when she broke down the biblical nature of what's happening, why we should pay attention if we feel like God is nudging us to let certain people and certain things go. She even shared out of 1 Corinthians 10, why Paul told them, if you are participating with something that is pagan, that is not of God, the association with it, you don't want to deal with the supernatural situation of it all. <laughs> you don't even want that smoke now. Let's look at what Jackie Hill Perry said when she went live. And if you don't know who she is, I hope, I hope you come to know because she is an amazing Bible teacher, but she went live about Beyonce. Well, mainly about the, the point of us not using wisdom when we should be using wisdom. Here's a clip. Beyonce was her creativity, her, her work ethic, her, uh, her courage. People wasn't doing it. 
at first. Like when she just randomly dropped an album, I was like, who has the courage to do that, right? It's, and that week, I kept entering into conversations with people where they were talking about how they had to throw away, throw away, or get rid of some kind of object object that had evil intentions or origins, right? And you know when you have conversations with people and stuff keep coming up, so it feel like, oh, the Lord, you must you must want me to do the same thing. So I was like, okay. So I sat in my uh, I was getting my hair done, and I sat in the chair. And I was like, okay, God, if there's anything you want me to get rid of that has evil origins, let me know. I'm thinking the Lord finna say, all oh, them shoes <laughs> or that shirt or that book in the back of your closet that you didn't realize you had. Literally what entered my mind was Beyonce. I said, wait, wait. I'm like, I'm like, that's just my subconscious. Like, that's not, that's not the Lord saying... <laughs> That I got to get rid of Beyonce, right? Because I just refused. I refused to believe that Jesus didn't want me to still, like, be teammate. I went down the biggest deep dive for some days on Yoruba spirituality, on Oshun, or Orishas, on all the things. And I realized, after doing some research, since Lemonade, that's usually, that's where the shift was, since Lemonade, she has centered, centered false deities and embodied them, right? So in, in Lemonade, when um, she comes out uh, with the yellow dress on and the water and all the things, like she, she becomes or tries to embody because I like the music so much that I didn't have discernment. The music made witchcraft beautiful and that's the problem and um i was i was looking up also black is king and black is king when it came out i thought that thing was so like aesthetically fire like i was just like oh like all the little scenes and all the stuff right every scene bro every scene is her centering some kind of deity it's multiple even to the point that there's this scene where she's dressed like a uh like a cow and she has this uh circle on top of her head right and what she's embodying because it ain't even like speculation it's like facts right so in that scene, she's dressed like a bull named Apis, A-P-I-S. At the end of the night, after I did all my research, I deleted every Beyonce album off my phone. And I'm not even gonna lie to you, I lamented that. There was grief because I told Preston, Beyonce is such a, a big part of my life and not my life like I was listening to her every day but when I think about moments like I remember being eight right at Christmas and receiving her CD I remember being with my friends when an album would drop and us listening to it and sharing over it I, this is sad but I have to be willing to trust that protecting my heart from evil is a good thing right like I, I i have to be willing to to believe that there are spiritual realities at play that as a wise christian i should not be opening myself up to um to me the issue is is less about beyonce and more about the necessity of wisdom i i think we have a wisdom problem wisdom being the application of knowledge. And I think a function of wisdom is discernment. Discernment is the ability to notice and identify goodness and to respond in such a way where the discernment is shown to be uh, good and right and true. So one reason I was hesitant to even have this conversation 
is because I think I've been really cynical towards people who are like discernment bloggers who like always have something to say about everything in the world. You know, like, uh, like it just gets on my nerves. Like just teach the Bible, like train people how to read the text, train people how to love Jesus. Tra like, we, like I, I think it can get, it can, it can actually, how do I say it? When you follow people who only call out and convict and critique they actually don't train you to have discernment on your own because they're not giving you the tools to develop your own wisdom and your own kind of um uh these own your like they don't give you the tools to know how to determine goodness without them and so that's why you got to keep listening to them you got to keep subscribing to them you got to keep watching their youtube because they never gave you tools they just tell you to cut this person off and i i am not the kind of person who is going to get mad at you for being hungry when I haven't even taught you how to fish. And so that's what this moment is, is that to me, what matters most is not just saying, maybe you shouldn't do that. It's this is why, and moving forward, these are the ways that you can apply this wisdom in a uh, different context. So for example, I think when it comes to something like Beyonce, right? Uh, that's like a really big, obvious thing to me but i think if we lack wisdom when it comes to participating in the big things that represent a cult and witchcraft then there is the potential that we are also lacking wisdom in the minor things such as should i go out with this person should i be this person's friend should i pursue this job should i read this book right and we cannot be arrogant in thinking that just because we are Christians, that God will not be displeased if we participate in certain things, right? Okay. Now, in verse 14, he says, Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to sensible, wise people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Listen to this. The cup of blessing that we bless is not a participation in the blood of Christ. The bread that we break is not a participation in the body of Christ. Then he says, 19, what do I imply then? Follow me, that food offered to idols is anything or that an idol is anything? No, I imply that what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons. What's the point? The point is you got uh, in Corinth, they got all these temples, right? And people are sacrificing food to demon or food to their idols, right? So, and so some of the people in Corinth obviously would naturally, you hungry, I'm gonna go get a sandwich right? You done sacrificed the pork, but you kept the leg. Let me get one of them legs, right? And so because it's just food, it doesn't seem that deep. Follow? So because they are only going to eat food, they not going to sacrifice. They not going to worship the idols. They not going to participate. For them, it's just food in the same way there are some artists where it's just, it's just music. I'm not doing what she's saying. I'm not worshiping Orishas. I'm not calling out to different deities. I'm not talking about Oshun. I just like the music. It's just, it's just music, right? But then he says, what the pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God, Listen, I do not want you, Christians, to be participants with demons. They're going to the altar, or they're going to the temple to simply eat food. The food is being sacrificed to idols. The Christians recognize that idols are not real gods. And therefore, they assume that there is no spiritual consequence to eating the food. Paul has to warn them in saying, ah, 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 you know something, but you're ignorant to another thing, which is that even if they are sacrificing the food to an idol that it is, is not a real God, there is a spiritual dimension behind the idol that is demonic. And so by virtue of you taking part in the food that was sacrificed, you are also fellowshipping with the demon the food was sacrificed to. And I think 
that that is potentially the principle that needs to be applied to our participation with certain music, concerts, uh, whatever, is that even if we have the insight to know that it's just music, it's just food, the spiritual reality at play inclines us to be wise in saying, but I cannot fellowship with demons. I cannot do it. Them eating meat sacrificed to idols, which is in the same way taking part in the Lord's Supper is fellowship with Christ and identification with Christ's body. Then also in the same way, when you eat meat sacrificed to idols, there is fellowship with demons and identif identification with the idolaters that are doing the work. And so what is at stake then is a matter of witness and a matter of fellowship because there are people who may see your partnership with certain artists and, I, and by partnership I simply mean just being in the temple being in the concert that it does something to their conscience where now they don't have the same tools and the same wisdom and the same knowledge you have but because you're there they can then assume that they're in the right place too, right? Okay, so do y'all like this? Y'all like it? I got a free gift card and this is what I picked up with it. Anyway, my story with Beyonce is this. I actually was in college, big Destiny Child fan. Y'all can tell there is fandom here, right? Um, the closer I grew to God when I finally got serious about him in my early 20s, yes, I'm in my 40s, ignore that, ignore that, okay? Finally got serious about him and the closer I got to God, he told me to let her go. Yeah. I had a moment where I was like, no, why, okay? She was raised in the church. She got the Lord's Prayer three albums ago. What do you mean let her go? He was like, let her go. I'm like, but her work ethic, Lord, look how creative she is. She knows you. And you know what God told me? If you can't let it go, you can't keep it. If you can't let go of something I've blessed you with, something that's in your life that you enjoy, and for my namesake, God said, then you should not keep it. It has a hold on you more than you have a hold on it. It was hard to hear, but I did it. I have not purchased a Beyonce album in over a decade easy and I'm not saying that because I'm proud of it I am proud of it from the fact of I feel like I obey God but not because it makes me any different or better than any other human but right now what is happening is very important and I think all of us have to decide as the end times draw closer whether God comes Jesus comes in our lifetimes or not as we move on day to day in Jesus name, do we want to be people where the world has more of a hold on us than we have influence on it? And I think it matters. I think it's a big deal. And I think we should pay attention when things like this happen and use God's word as the measuring stick. So I encourage you to listen to all of Jackie Hill Perry's um instagram post and she delivered it with such grace like you won't feel judged hopefully you don't feel judged even in this video but i had to share had to speak out um on this because if you've ever had this experience and you know you've had to separate yourself from certain things that everyone else loved you totally are gonna feel me but here we go have an amazing day okay don't forget to subscribe